Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Welcome to the shack. Stay home and craft. Safe, happy and creative. How are we all this morning? Have we got anybody with us? I'm sure there's plenty of people coming in today. It's a very special day indeed today. So um, I'll just wait for the all clear from Jilly to make sure that you can hear me. We've done some testing this morning, so it's all good. Good morning, Jill. I can see you've just popped up on the screen there. Good morning, Helen. Good morning, good morning, everybody. It's warm again today down here in Kent. What's it like with you? Nice and sunny. Good morning, Sheila in Peterborough. Good morning, Vivian. Oh, lots of lovely, friendly faces coming into the room today. Super duper. How are we all doing? It comes around so quickly, doesn't it? Crazy, crazy time. Time just flies by, it really does. I hope you've all had a good week. Oh, look at all these lovely names coming in. Super. Okay, are we at 10 o'clock? We're spot on 10 o'clock. So what we're gonna do is, it's Groovy Tuesday, and we have a very special guest with us today. And I know that you've all been so excited. I mean, I'm just as excited as well because I'm going to learn so much as well. Because this is something that I've struggled to learn myself because impatient and it's a skill. So who better than to have an expert in the building? A name a lot of people out there watching will be very familiar with. So I'm going to play producer and director at the same time. So if I, my head looks down, it's because I'm looking to see where the mouse is. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to this wonderful, super duper, lovely, special, amazing Linda Williams. Hi. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing today? What's the weather like down in Wales? Oh, it's lovely in Wales. I think uh, for a change, we've got a bit of sunshine. <laughs> it's usually <laughs> raining. Oh, I noticed a couple of days ago it was raining with you, but we are. Yeah, we had. Us, so yeah, yeah. So what have you been up to? What have you been? What's been keeping you busy? Oh, over lockdown, it's been groovy, groovy, groovy has kept me busy. So um, I've been doing a lot of work for Clarity over the lockdown. Um, it's just been a strange time, isn't it? You know, we've, it we've has all, indeed. I think we've all struggled. And I think um, groovy has kept me sane, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, well, I actually went to play bowls with my husband. I've never played bowls before. And I think the lockdown taught me that I should really be spending a little bit more time with him. So I went to play bowls with him. Oh, I ache today. I was useless. <laughs> <laughs> and you've brought us some fantastic designs more recently. The beautiful It's a Wrap, the Dragonfly, the Butterfly, and the Magnolia and the Hummingbird. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, we've got, we've got some more in the pipeline. Um, it's something that's similar along the lines of a wrap, but different, very different. Ooh. I'm quite looking forward to that coming out. No, I'm not saying anything. Don't say any more, Linda. <laughs> we'll get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, so we've got loads of people in the room today. So welcome. Um, we've got the lovely Linda with us. And as we explained previously, what Linda is going to be showcasing and showing us and teaching us is how to create that beautiful white work. I've got a couple of pieces here that Linda has done previously. Let me just grab those. So if I just go to my overhead ca camera. So Linda, talk us through this, would you? Okay. Well, um, number one is um, where um, we've We've done a fine outline and just used a really large tool. And then for number two, I've got a better version of that actually with me and I'll show it to you later. Um, I've got six stages on mine. So with number two, um, we've, we've started doing a little bit more embossing and number three, more again. These are the first stages and all this has been done with a six millimeter ball tool, which is probably your best friend really. 
um, I, I would suggest if they have, if, if, if your viewers haven't got that, to get that particular one. Because okay. I think yeah, most of them are starting with the, the starter set and they, the, the beginner set and have the groovy tools. And if you can only stretch to one other tool, I think the six millimeter ball tool would be good. So the six mil ball tool is your best friend when it comes to parching. Absolutely. I mean, for me, it's the pink mat and you yeah. use that a lot as well, don't you, Linda? Do that as well, it's those two, it's the, it's the pink mat, six millimeter ball tool. The other ball tools are equally, well, not equally important. They are important. You can manage without them. And I'll, I'll try and, and demonstrate that for you. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, lovely. So, last week we were talking about, we let me just bring in what we managed to get up to last week, Linda, so you, you can see how far we've got. So, we took that beautiful paisley plate from that Barbara designed, and we created our background or our art piece. And what we did was we infilled these particular areas, and we've left these areas open here for you to show us how we can create that beautiful, I, I call it sort of like a faux vein type of look. Yes. Is that the right terminology for it? Yes, I think, that, I think that's, yes, definitely. You're creating a vein with a shadow. Perfect. Okay. What I'll do so, today is I'll, I'll, I'll create a vein down the center of the paint. We pretend it's a leaf, I'll create a vein down the center and then next week, maybe we can move on and we can create all the little things that come off as well. And I can show you lots of different ways to use your embossing. Um, on, on one image, the way that you emboss it can be so different and you can give it a totally different look. So everybody oh, wow. can come up with something really different. So you can use your imagination with your embossing. People just think it's for filling in and creating a bit of shadow, but no, you can do far more with it than that. Yeah. Oh, I look forward to that. So should I let you get ready then, Linda, so you yeah. can switch your camera around? So okay. I'm just going to switch you off for one moment. So yeah. Linda will be back with us very shortly. There we go. So how exciting is that? The technology works. And it's brilliant. Hopefully you can see really well at home. Um, I'm just watching from the corner of my eye. I can see Linda in the background. She's switching her corner, her camera around. So that, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to have a play as well. And I'm going to be learning because we always learn, don't we? Just because we do something all the time or we don't know how to do something, it's always about having that education. So I think Linda will give me a thumbs up once she's good to go. I'm just trying to um, say, oh, I've seen the thumbs up from Linda. So I hope you're all ready and we're good to go. And I'm gonna hand you over to Linda. Now, if you have any questions, ask away because I'm not doing anything in particular. So I can watch and read any questions and ask Linda for you. So don't be sh too scared to ask or too shy. You know, we've always said, no question is ever a silly question. So let me click my little button. I'm gonna bring Linda back in on the overhead. Let me see if I go, I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna switch that on there. So there oh. we go. Oh, we're the wrong way around, switch me off. We're the wrong way around, okay. See, I, I couldn't see which way. <laughs> Isn't technology great? Good morning, everybody. Nobody's late. You can always watch us again um, on Catch Up Afterwards on our YouTube channel. And I think Linda is good to go now. I'm just waiting for that little thumbs up sign from Linda. And I reckon, nope, she's still, she's still twiddling that camera around. <laughs> I tell you, what, technology. I mean, I I'm okay with some technology, but some technology can just be a little bit mad. Okay, I can see the thumbs up now. Right. Okay. With a further ado, I'm going to pass you over to the super duper lovely Linda Williams. So we're going to switch Linda back on now. I and think there that's... we go. <laughs> we're the right way around now. 
<laughs> there we go, Linda. Oh, yeah, that's so okay, I, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah. is. So I'm okay. going to hand it over to you now, Linda. I'm just going to sit back and admire right. okay. and learn. Yeah, okay. So I wanted to show you this one um, because this is the way that we would um, trace out the groovy with the, with the number one ball tool. Uh, number one groovy n number one groovy tool so you've got the the solid white outlines there so when you do some shadow embossing in there you can't lose your outlines in the shading so on this one i've done i've i've done the tracing with the number two ball tool so um you can see how much sh the, sh the shading has just taken the line away you haven't got that harsh outline so this is the traditional way of doing it where we trace with a pencil um, and just do the embossing and then rub the pencil out so you can see now that it's more it's it's more towards the traditional by doing it this way so people that do the traditional parchment craft are coming on board and using the, the groovy plates now to to actually do the tradition, you know, to make it look more realistic. This m looks more realistic than this. Sometimes that's the look you want, um, if that's the way you want to do it. I, I sometimes do use this, um, but if you want a, a softer look, then that's the way to do it. Okay, so moving on. this is the one you showed, Paul. Yeah, I think I might hold yeah. that up to the... There we are. Oh, if you turn that the other way. There we go. Now, there we go. <laughs> so there we are. Number one is where we've um, we've just done a, a little bit of shading with the number six millimeter ball tool. Number two, I've added some more shading with a six millimeter ball tool. Now between number one and number two, there's probably more than one layer difference. So there's probably Number one would be one layer, and number two, I might have done it two or three times. So that's how, how much embossing we do at a time. So number three has probably got another couple of layers onto it. Okay? okay. And yep. then number four, I'll get used to this. <laughs> number four, because I've got this certain degree of whiteness there, so when I move then to this one, number four, what I've done is I've gone to the 4.5 millimeter ball tool. So always try and get to this degree of whiteness before you move on to the smaller tools. And I'll explain why in a minute. And then number five, I've moved down to the, the three millimeter ball tool. So you can see now you're starting to get much more definition in there. And number six, the three millimeter and the 1.5. So you don't bring those in until the very end of your embossing. You could actually stop at number three. I think that's quite nice. It's nice and it's yes. delicate. It all depends on the degree of whiteness that you want. And good shadow embossing incorporates all the shades of the parchment from the, the gray, from the gray of the parchment there into the veins okay yeah and all the shades of white in between so you've got gray then you've got gray white and then it's going a bit whiter and then it's going white and very white on the tips okay beautiful so a question from um, the lovely karen drennan how yeah. long do you leave between each of the layers okay now then um ideally you could perhaps get to that stage in the first go. I would say if, you, if you're working on a piece, you should do it all, put a layer on all of it and then go back. Okay. And then you could possibly stretch it to that degree. Once you've got to that degree, I mean, if you can leave it 20, 30 minutes, or if you could do that one day, go to that next day, go to that next day. That's the way I work. I generally okay. will maybe do one or two or three at a push layers one day and then I'll go to the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. 
I can't explain to you. You have to um, experience the difference in your parchment when you actually let it rest. If you let it rest overnight, there is a, it springs the next day when you emboss it. It's got, it's as if it's got a new life. It just, wow. it, it springs under your embossing tool. You don't get that spring if you do it all in one go. So what I suggest we do today is to is to do one from start to finish. I'm assuming people will be, a lot of people will be working along with me. So if we do yeah. one from start to finish, but you will know that you shouldn't be doing it this quickly. And then if you start another one after we finished and, and do that a little bit every day and compare the two at the end and you will see what a, an amazing difference there is. So that's that's okay. what I suggest. So perfect. A couple of layers on each. Then, then I've just got six layers there. There's probably about twelve layers there. Okay. Wow. And the longer you take, the more layers you put, the better your embossing will be. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So where do we start? So we're starting on this one here. Yes. Yeah. That's the one we're doing, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Yes. So, okay, so we'll stick our, well, I'm not going to stick mine down, actually. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it that way so that I can go across. And I want to do, I want to actually do four of them because we're going to do them, it's boring just to do one, I think. We're going to do them in, in different, uh, different ways. So number okay. two, so stick it down if you want, okay, if you're, if you're a little bit nervous, if you're new, then we'll stick it down. I'm only going to stick it down with one because I'm going to move it across. So then with your uh, number two, groovy tool, so you're just going to do it, emboss in the groove with the most, the lightest touch that you can possibly muster so that you can hardly see it if your eyesight is bad. So... I, if I bring that up to the camera, you can see how just how light mine is. Okay. Yeah, we can see Get that. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to do four of these. So it's nice. It's just very, very lightly. Um, yeah. So we're, we're doing um, four, you said. We're going we're to do four. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing this at the same time as you, Linda, because okay. I want to learn as well. Don't forget your tumble dryer sheet, especially if you're moving it over. And does it have to be perfectly embossed or could, could, if we miss yeah. parts, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. You can always go back and fill it in later if you think you haven't got an, a really neat outline. And if you do this very gently, and you've you come to your finished piece and you think oh that looks like too much of a gap there you see i'm slipping out because i'm doing it so gently yeah if you think there's a bit of a gap there you can always go back in and add a little bit more you know it's uh okay and you can always do that with embossing you can always add more but you can never take it away okay? i suppose just like what barb says with color isn't it you can yes. always add it but you can never take it away never take it away yeah so I'm going to use, is it okay if I use my pink mat? Absolutely. If that's because what that's you, you're comfortable. I'm used to, yeah. It makes a big difference, the pink mat. So Okay. I'm, I'm and if, if, people, if, if the lovely people at home, the lovely viewers at home, if they don't have a pink mat and they've got the black mat from the starter kit, that can be used as well? Oh, definitely. Yes, just 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 go very very lightly, or like you've done before, put um, a little uh, plastic uh, uh, cello bag over the top, and that yeah, stops perfect. you from uh, pressing too hard. Well, we all start started with a soft black mat to begin with, so let me just explain the tools now before we go any further. So we've got a whole array of tools here. We've got the the groovy tool number one and number two. And yeah, we've got the groovy tool number three and four, and then we've got from the other end, we've got the 
six millimeter ball tool, my best friend. And then yeah. we've got the 4.5 <laughs> millimeter ball tool and the three. And then we've got the 1.5, one and the 0 0.5. And if you're not sure, it does, does say on the end which one it is. And on okay. the new groovy tools, it's got written one, two, three, and four. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all very, very useful. Um, and as you can see, the number one is very similar to the 0 0.5. And then you've got the number two sort of falls in between those two. The, yeah. the, and then you've got, so you've got, and that one falls in between there. So you've got that's between the um, the one and the one point and the the one point five, and then this one sort of falls between there. So you've got a, a, a wide range of embossing tools. So let me just explain why to get that nice white embossing, you would not start with um, the small tools. Okay. So okay, with the large tool. I'll try and do equal pressure for five strokes with that one. Then you've got the 4.5, five, and then I've got the three. You can see it's getting whiter. And then yeah. 1.5, and then I've got the one. So it's, it's getting now very white, but it's only producing, so you've got the six down to the 0 0.5 and it gets whiter as it goes along. Yeah. So when you're doing the shadow embossing, your aim is to, to get something really, really smooth. So if I show you this one, Turn it round. So your aim is to get something really smooth like that. Right, okay. okay. With the little veins in between. So you won't get that with the smaller tools. I've only used the smaller tools right on the tips there and to do these bits here. And, and there's, a, there's a good indication of leaving the gray of the parchment. So what I always say, what you leave out is, is as important as what you put in. So you, and you can see there as well, there's a gap. If yeah. you need gaps that are too big, you can always go back and fill them in later. Okay. So, Perfect. right. So when you, when you're embossing to get a nice smooth embossing, it, I prefer to press and flick away from me. Some people might prefer to do it the other way the aim is where your the ball of your tool hits the parchment where you go down there that's going to be the whitest and where you take it off is going to fade into gray so if i do it if i do it heavy you'll see what i mean so can you see how that line is the whitest there and then it's faded into the gray so the aim yeah. is to get that smooth embossing is to edge over ever so slightly and then it, you've got that smooth transition as you're moving across. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, we can if see I that. Was, if I if I if I move too quickly, and I did this, I'm gonna have, have an awful job trying to fill it in. So, so you've got more lines rather than a yes. smooth. Yeah. Right. You see. Yeah. Patience is key. If you're not too sure where you're, you know, if you're not too sure, because you've got, you're working with a ball tool, you've got to get your eye in as to where the ball comes down onto the parchment. Because it's such a wide tool, it doesn't start where you can see where the ball starts. It starts in the middle. So you, you've got to get used to that idea because good embossing will come right up to your embossed line and incorporate your embossed line into your embossing you don't want a gap from your embossed line to where your embossing starts do you understand i'll okay. explain that again later so you need to come over very slightly 
and aim in the direction that you want to go and you need some long strokes and some short strokes so that don't all finish in the same place and the next time you go in you'll have some long strokes and some short strokes and they won't all be in the same place perfect okay so you keep on going so then it gets okay that's quite smooth but i would name to go that white to start with so if you yeah. were to go say if you think oh i'm going to do that with my uh, Linda, just one moment. I'm just yeah. going to flick over the other camera. I'm just going. We've got a, a special visitor in the room. Just bear with me for a moment. Can you see your camera? Yeah. Can you see your camera at the moment? I can We've see the camera. Yeah. Special visitor in the room. So I'm just going to flick that over. <laughs> oh, and they're going to write camera. <laughs> this is my hand. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Hello, Linda. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. How are you, love? Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Happy day. She's Happy in the day, building. Yeah. I knew you were there because I heard you earlier. <laughs> Did you? Was I, I out loud? I... No, <laughs> it was before we started. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> the door was still open somewhere. then. <laughs> how's yeah. it going have we got lots of friends in the building with us yes we have indeed we've got 237 people watching <laughs> royalty is in the building no pressure linda <laughs> no pressure yeah yeah <laughs> well listen love i'm gonna i'm gonna give paul his earpiece back and i'll let you get on <laughs> yeah okay speak to you soon I'll speak to you later, love. Thanks yeah, again. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Wow. How yeah. special is that? <laughs> <laughs> right. I shall hand you back to Linda. <laughs> there we go, Linda. All yours. Right. Okay. So, um, so I've got I've moved now to the three millimeter ball tool. So if you have <laughs> if you have the urge to get get it really right with this tool, I wouldn't suggest it because. It's very difficult to get that. Okay, I can move it over. It can be quite nice, but you can see where I finished. Are you able to hold that up a little bit closer yeah. to the camera, Linda? Yeah. yeah. And can you see the lines? Yes. So yes. you haven't got that transition from the, the grey to the white and the bright white. All you've got is bright white, really, and a few lines. Do you see what I mean? Right, yeah. Whereas if I took this one, the one I've done previously, and I kept on going with that. If you're not sure where this, this ball tool should come down onto the parchment, put your fingernail and work off your fingernail. On that right point. okay okay so so then i probably would go to the 4.5 and i'm gonna do a little bit less this time so is that like when barbara does her coloring where she does like a uh a, exactly two thirds a half yeah, yeah. A quarter? yeah yeah this is the way i color as well and if we've got time on the end, I'll show you how to put a little bit of colour in this as well. We'll see how the time goes, is it? So if I turn that round, can you see? Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. And it, I suppose at the end of the day, as you say, it is that patience part of it, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You, you've just got to take your time. And, and practice, you know, if, if you... You do a little do a little bit every day by by doing one and going to it every day you'll have it will look different and when you go to it in the morning you think oh that it looks better than it did yesterday the parchment actually springs back into shape whereas if you do it all in one go then all you're going to do is stretch and break the fibers and it's going to end up looking like cotton wool Okay. Right. Okay. So Perfect. Back to our little piece that we did. 
me just explain one more thing to you. I've got a diagram. There we are. There's my diagram of my paisley piece. So I thought okay. if I took a diagram and drew in where I'm going to be embossing, you then would have an idea. You Because it's so small, um, you might not see the direction that I'm embossing in. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to emboss so that it's white from this end, white from that end, and a gap in the middle. Okay. okay. So that's, yeah. that's the way I'm going to do it. And I'm going to leave this bit here clear. Okay. So when I when I emboss, I always start in the middle. So this emboss line is, is going, can you see that? It's going that way. Yeah. And then as I go around, these embossed lines are going to follow. So each one curves a little bit more than the other. So that one is not actually straight. It should be following that line around. And then on this side, I'm going to leave a little gap and I'm going to. So those are going that way. And then. All of a sudden, you're going to start coming round this way with the right, curve. Okay. okay. It's going to look better than if you just do this. Right. Okay. And then yeah. when I do this end, I'm going to start. I'm going to actually start. I probably, it, it, you have to have the parchment in a position that's comfortable for you. So I probably will go around that way so you could put that bit in first and then you could go you could turn it round and then and then leave a gap and then those are going this is the way i would emboss you see see i'm yeah. doing it with my pencil even this is the way i color and i'm going to leave a gap there so i'm going to do one of those i'm going to do one with um the embossing just on the bottom i'm going to do another one with the embossing on the top um yeah i'm going to do another one too and i can't remember what that was never mind i think <laughs> <that one. laughs> i'm full of these good ideas <laughs> oh yes i was going to do one there we are so we're going we're gonna to do uh, let me hold it up I'm going to do one. Oh, I'll get the hang of this. There we are. Wow. So from the bottom to the middle, middle empty, yeah. and you've got that line, and from the top in, but still maintaining that gap there where you've so just that's the, got parchment. That's the white work version of what you was just doing with the pencil. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to do one with just that, the bottom bit in and the top will be empty and then I'll do one with the top in and the bottom will be empty and I'm going to show you how to get this in the middle wow okay? that's lovely so right let's get cracking or we'll never finish <laughs> <laughs> patience right. Linda patience <laughs> <laughs> right extra large ball tool okay on your embossing mat you've um, you've embossed your um, your shapes and you st that's the front you can feel that it's raised okay and yeah okay so we're working on the back if you're not okay. sure right front or back on on the right that's right let's do it this is the front <laughs> front okay i still get confused sometimes okay so so now then what we're going to do, we're going to take a white pencil on a hard surface on the front and we're going to draw in a vein. You can trace okay. it from your groovy plate if you want. Okay. Or you can do it by hand. If, you're tracing, it from, if you're tracing it from your groovy plate, you need to turn your groovy plate over so that the paisley shape is pointing in the right direction we can we're going to rub that out afterwards okay yeah you don't have to 
don't always have to have the vein in the same place. If it's on the groovy plate, it doesn't mean to say it's got to be there, does it? You can no, change. No, absolutely. That. Okay. Okay, so this one, or whichever whichever end you want to start. So I'm going to, I'm, because I'm working from there, I'm going to turn my parchment a little bit because I want to sweep that way. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start in the middle just by that line and I'm going to, it's a little press and a flick and move over ever so gently. If you're at the end, now you've done it wrong. <laughs> 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 so it's a really good sweep. There we are. You with me? Yeah? Yeah. And then on the other side, you're going to leave a little gap. So leave a little gap. Now, don't worry if, you, if, you've, if you're ever working like this and you haven't left a gap. You can put it in later with the smaller tools. You can just have a, a pale grey in the gap and then remember to do it later on and introduce more, less whiteness where the gap should be. So you can see now I've swept around there and then I'm almost going straight and now I'm sweeping that way to take a more natural shape. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and then it's very, very pale. If you find you haven't gone up far enough, you can actually go halfway, but you, you've got to be very gentle doing this and vary where you start your embossing. You can move it up a little bit. So, okay. It's yours nice and smooth? I think so. Let, let yeah. me just bring a, a black mat. I don't know if you'll be able to... I don't know if I want to show. <laughs> there we go. Let's just have a look there. Yeah, it's lovely. Look? Brilliant. Yeah, I've noticed that I've got a bit of a, a white line there. Is that because yeah. I moved too quickly? Probably your your embossing is uneven. You probably, you know, did did one a little bit too heavy. That'll right. come with time. Yeah, definitely. That'll come with time. So, okay, perfect. So... Turn your, turn your parchment around and now I'm going to emboss. Now, you might find, you think, oh, that tool's never going to fit in there, but I, I, I promise you it will. And with practice, if you're really struggling, go down to the 4.5 if you're struggling to do that little bit. But I will always, I recommend that you persevere with this one. And, uh, and so... And then I'm going to take it down a little bit. And I'm going to go, remember now that I've gone up to the line on that side. So I'm going to go up to the line on this side. Okay. Gently does it. And the gap is going to be on the, on this side, on the, on the left hand side. Whereas when I did it that way, the gap was there. So keep the gap on the same side of the line, no matter which way you're working. And again, don't worry at this point if you haven't got a decent gap. Or if the gap is too wide, don't worry about that either because we can always go in later. I often go back and fill things in. Okay? So on yeah. the second one, we're just going to do it on the bottom. So again, along the line and a nice sweep. And now I'm going to go right up to the edge so it's a press and a flick away from you there we are and then on the other side leave a little gap follow the center vein and then start to alter the angle of your embossing Yeah, I'm not coming right up to my line there. So you need to be right on your line. At um, when I'm on my own, I've got I've got a magnifier which 
which is my saving grace, really. <laughs> I, can, I can actually see, I'm, I'm struggling here a little bit. So you've done the bottom. So on this one, you're going to do the top. Yeah. Okay. I'm still catching up on the bottom of the second one. Okay, no problem. Uh, I'm happy little... with my second one this time. Yeah, there we are. The more you do it, the better it becomes. It doesn't matter if you leave your gap on the left or the right hand side of the vein. You just do the same if you're doing it on the top or the bottom. I'm going to go down a little bit further on this bit. Nice and smooth, nice and slow. And you can always come back and just take it really, really slowly. I think that tip of using your thing, finger in yeah. front of the, the line, that, that's really helped me because yeah. it gives me that, brings my eye in. Yeah. And it's also good when you're using pencils. You just take the, the tip of the pencil off your finger and then you've got a decent, yeah. decent line and a decent edge. So I'll show you how it looks. You might think, oh, that's pale, but that's the way to do it. That's the way to get it really smooth. So okay. let's do the middle bit then. So when you do something in the middle like this, you don't want, you want the wetness in the middle and it's fading both ways. So yeah. I always find that a good way of doing that is to actually rock the tool back and forth. Taking right, the okay. ball of the tool off the parchment on each end. So you're still maintaining the shape. So we're rocking it back and forth. And it, the tool is coming off each end. And then you do the other side. Leave a little vein if you want to. Okay. There's so many ways <laughs> of doing it. Yeah. It's just, it's getting into that rhythm, isn't it? Because yeah. obviously just by flicking away or yeah. flicking towards you and now it's just getting the, the hand to go in a, a sort of a different movement. Yeah. It's good for doing, um, you know, a ribbon if you want um, a highlight in the middle of a, a twisted ribbon. Yeah. Really good for that. Or if you've got the turnover of a, a rose petal or something like that, you know. I'll turn it over now for you to see. So you can see that it's a little bit, it will become whiter in the middle, but you can see that it's fading into the surrounding grey and you can't really see where it, you shouldn't really see where it ends. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's your first emboss. So we go back to the first one now that you did. And we'll give it another coat. Okay. And so it's the same process as for the first layer. Yeah. Exactly the same. And you you under same pressure. It's only at the very end would I recommend that you start to increase your pressure when you've got some nice white shading yeah and i give it give it another coat if you like whilst we're here so this is probably where i would end for my first day and then i would leave it overnight and then you turn it around you following yeah yeah and then we're going to do the top bit again so we do that little hook there and just if you can't do this quickly just do it slowly mm. you know you don't have to and, and and if you perfect the technique slowly and then you can speed up i suppose it's like anything isn't it linda that when, when you're learning it's it's always best to go at that slower pace until you build up the confidence yeah 
yeah and if you go slowly you can still you know get that flick of the of the tool so there that's where we'd probably would finish your first slot right okay. and then let it rest so let's do the next one so it's all practice so when when you you know when we finish today i would recommend you have another go and um and start a few of these and um just just keep keep doing it and then you can do a little bit every day or even have a go if you've got any other groovy plates have a go with a flower and um experiment so the bottom alone of that one and the top of that one you're as bad as me linda giving all our lovely people watching homework i thought i was doing on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the only way you learn isn't it by by i think i i always used to find if i if i went to a workshop I never did my best work in a workshop following somebody. I always did my best work when I went home and I was on my own, you know. So, yeah. um, in fact, it was rubbish when I went to workshops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that, Mrs. Yeah. William. <laughs> <laughs> I remember somebody telling me once I went to a, a teacher's workshop and because I held the scissors the wrong way around, she said... Um, Oh, you'll never make a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> she said to me, you're, holding the, you're not supposed to hold the scissors like that. Well, 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 I said, well, where is it written that I can't hold my scissors like a spoon and not a fork? Oh, you'll never make a teacher. You'll never get it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention a name. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh dear. Right, so I'm gonna do the, the one with the embossing in the middle now. So it's it's remember it's that rocking motion back and forth. Still though, only edging over a bit at a time. There we are. Keep that middle vein clear if you remember. And after all, if you don't remember, it's only a piece of parchment, isn't it? <laughs> It is indeed. And it's all about the learning, isn't it, Linda? Yeah. yeah. And enjoying it. There we are. So that's that's about the stage you'd you'd stop at now for your first day. Okay. Oh, I've got a I've got a bit of a white line there. Let's let's rectify that. Okay, so what do you mean by a white line there, Linda? What So I've, there, can you see? I've got a white line there and I've left a gap. I haven't come right up to my edge and I've gone a bit too heavy there. Right, okay. There? Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Okay, so I'm just, all I can do with that now is, it is difficult doing this rock motion. I'll just smooth that in a little bit there. Yeah, it's going now. Okay. So, it's so, all right. Let's go back again, and we'll we'll put a bit more in. So, so we're going go back to the first one again. The first one, which you wouldn't be doing now. That's very bad practice. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell anyone, Linda. We won't tell anyone. There's no. There's no one. It's just me and you in the room. There's nobody. <laughs> and going to do the top. So is this supposed to be just for an hour, Paul? Yes, or thereabouts. <laughs> run over, can we? <laughs> we can run over, okay. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, we've fun? got lots to talk about as well today, haven't we? Oh, okay. I'll speed up a bit then. No, 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 no. You go at the, the pace that suits you. I'll fit in with you, Linda. Okay. So I've gone on to my second one now. A little bit more and I'm going to do two coats on this and I've done I think I'll do two coats on my first one it 
if you're struggling you. to keep up just do the one and just just follow what i'm doing on the others so two quarters have you the seen business. our um our current offer of the week linda the designer parchment yeah brilliant half price half price i think that's amazing that's and it's lovely to use i mean you can do this on on your colored designer parchment this would look beautiful on there i haven't got i haven't got a favorite i like them all <laughs> i know i mean you've got northern lights indian summer yeah. Toscana, waimea falls rainbow river shenandoah and if you're a club member, you also get your discount as well on top. Brilliant. Bonus. You can't go wrong for half price, can you? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> there we are. So I'm going to do a bit, little bit more now on this little one. Right. So... At that stage, I probably would give it another few goes. Okay, let's, let's let me just do this one then. Another few, just so that I can show you where you introduce a bit more shading. So it's at this point now you rub out your your pencil line. When you've got this shape in, you can just yeah. get into that pencil line. See, I'm much happier with my second one that I've done yeah. compared to my first one. I suppose yes. it's like um, when you come to do uh, pico cutting where you warm up first. I suppose that first one for me was my warm up exercise. Exactly. And, you know, when I'm when I'm making when I'm doing a design, I'll never go straight to my design in the morning when I start. I will always get my hand in first because. Um, you you've got to get used to doing it and and i'm always like that i'm always i'm always going doing i've got bits of scrap everywhere when i'm coloring i always try it out on a bit of scrap the same applies to your embossing try it out on a bit of scrap first so when you get to that sort of level okay that sort of yeah level, okay you could then go down to your 4.5 millimeter ball tool so you go with the 4.5 and it's the same exactly the same thing only this time i'm doing a little bit less so you're not going as far with your strokes not, no no and if you remember some long strokes some short so it's at this point now where you think that might be a little bit too thick so let's close it up a bit can you see? It's gone. Oh, right. the, the line. Yeah. You see how that's closed up a little bit now? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you, and, I mean, you know, if, you, if you've got good, you've got to have good control over the ball tool to do that. But you can close it up even more if you want. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, see the difference? Oh, yeah. It's much nicer wow. if you close it up and it's fine. But you, it's difficult to do that with a 4.5 millimeter ball tool. Mm. Okay, so now this one gets in there quite nicely. So there we are. So you keep on going until you've got a nice degree of whiteness and keep doing a little bit like you don't the bigger the area the the bigger the, the tool that you need in that area you wouldn't use i wouldn't i really wouldn't use anything much smaller maybe um maybe a three to get it really white there and so these now are the finishing touches just for the very end and you could perhaps use 
So you can see I'm not doing much at all there now. Just. Mm. I'll show it to you and you can see then. Can you see? Oh, yeah. So you've got the bright white moving into the grey and then you've got more white there. Yeah. Wow. What a difference it makes. Yeah. And you can do that with all of these. Okay. So have you got yeah. a minute to go? Or do you want to move on? Do you want to... No, no, whatever you want to do, Linda. No, it's okay. You're in charge. So, when you've done all the bits, that, the embossing that you want to do, you could then go on and colour a little bit. So, when, you, when you're going to add some colour, let me bring this one in. I'm going to add some colour in. Um, I wouldn't suggest that you colour the whole thing. Because right. if you, especially if you're using Dorso oil, what will happen is um, you colour on the back, you blend it with Dorso oil, and then the embossing that you've done just looks like a greasy mark. And then you're going to have to go back in and refresh it. And sometimes it doesn't recover as well as it should. Sometimes you can get away with it, but if it's really big, it doesn't, doesn't recover quite as well. So this is why I wanted you to try just half of it. So we yeah. could put half of the embossing flowing into a colour. Do you see, do okay. you see what I mean? So yeah. I, I bring that in. So we've got half the embossing there. So on the back, let me have my pencil mark out first. Got a bit of a, a bit of a wide um, vein there. Let me just close that up. You can keep it, just white work if you like. But on that paisley design you're doing, Paul, are you going mm. to be color you're going to be colouring that, I assume, aren't you? Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. be adding some yeah. colour. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll maybe put my line back in. I can't see where it should be then, should I? <laughs> right. So I got I've got my um pergoliners. I've taken yeah. two blue pencils and I'm going to colour this one okay so yeah. on the back nice sharp pencils just the same as you did with your embossing just a press and a flick and you press you flick it into the white and keep your lines really close together so you haven't got any gaps. So it's the same process as if you were doing the white work, you're just doing the same technique exactly. with the pencil. Yeah, exactly. And and I think probably I would recommend that if you haven't got too many lines, if it's not looking too grainy, you could mm. dry you could dry blend it. So take it, take your a dry cut and dry nib. Yeah. Or whatever it is you're using, and just push it into the embossing. And then with a the dark pencil, you can add a little bit more. And then if you're feeling a little bit clever. Now, if you can't see what you're doing, sometimes if you put your put it on a piece of white paper, yeah. you can't see your pencil mark. So I would have had that much, that would have been much neater with me if I'd had it on something that I could see where I was going. So what you do is you take a piece of lilac parchment. It's a good tip if you put it underneath. You can actually see your embossing. And your colouring. Uh, that's, yeah, because I, I wondered that. Yeah, because 
with the white paper underneath yeah it's quite difficult isn't it to be able it to is. see where your white lines are yeah. especially if you've done it with that soft line as well that's right no matter what ah. you're doing you can't it's difficult to see so when you turn it over then you've got some really nice shading don't forget to um to blend it with your dry blender i mean if you want to if you if you want really want to use some dose oil on your blending nib just put a tiny bit take some off on a piece of tissue and then even drag your blending nib down like that so that you're not actually taking some dose oil into your embossed part and then if you're feeling really really adventurous you could even put a little bit on the front and because you've got really soft lines you can actually you can actually cover those as well there we are wow gosh there we are beautiful over and out <laughs> over and out right <laughs> okay wow linda that, that's just i'm going to switch back to me for a moment so you can then swap your camera over right, so, okay. and then we can we can talk to you face to face okay wow how was that that was just my mind is just going oh like it's, that was beautiful I, i'll show you what i've done i mean this is i have struggled to do this and to have linda as in the room in the virtual room so let's have a look on my overhead so we can see here this was my first one and you, i've got lots of lines on that because again i suppose it was that warm-up process but then this was my second one and it was a lot better so linda's sort of back in so i'm going to bring linda into the room so let's have a look we're going to go linda in the room switch linda back on and there she is <laughs> welcome back linda so what, what do you reckon you can i can really see the difference between those um, yeah i can see i can see that you've got i can see the visible lines there it's very good but it's not perfect that the second one is perfect yeah yeah, yeah and for yeah. me I struggled with the rocking so i gave up on the rocking but you have got it paul because you you know it's not it's not blatantly obvious that that's where where you started or where you finished which is which what what you you know what so it there's no no harsh end to it no that's good well done yeah I, i'm well pleased with that that was just crazy so um wow thank you so much <laughs> i know everybody at home down, if you break it down into stages it's not that difficult you know you just yeah. need to to be shown the right way and the more you do it the better you get at it it is indeed well yeah. Uh, you've got a few years experience behind you linda <laughs> <laughs> only a few you're only you're only a, a young lady oh. so, <laughs> so have you seen um barbara did a blog on saturday about the new plate mate the designed by josie davidson um this again just sort of blows my mind i'm gonna bring it in on the my overhead camera so this is a embossed I may have to, I'm going to pop you in the bottom corner, Linda. Just bear yeah, with okay. me for a moment. See if I can just bring you down. We'll swap you around. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to just zoom out so that everybody at home can really see. So we have a, an A4 square plate, mate, which is our Celtic one, which houses the beautiful A4 square plates for when we're working. And Josie has designed, these are embossed grids. They're not perforated but you've got these beautiful embossed patterns, okay? In addition to that, she's also created a plate that sits perfectly in the middle. So if you're working with the beautiful A4 square, any of the A4 square plates, they will fit in here really well. And then Mr. Dave, Mr. Clarity, when I was doing um, your last TV show, I was using your beautiful um, It's a Wrap Dragonfly, and I was using larger parchment. So what I was doing was I was taking, oh, there we go, I've got these stuck, these are attached. It comes in two parts because it's so that it doesn't break in the post, okay? And what I was doing, I was using your plates 
and I was popping the original plate mate at either end. Okay, and Dave said, oh, look, it's got a bit of a gap. Surely we can do something about that. So now we have little extenders. How clever is that? Brilliant. Makes a big okay. difference when you're working with a bigger plate. Yeah, so I, it gives you... Yeah, go I, on. It was something that I didn't really know I needed, but when I had it, I really wanted to really knew why I needed it. <laughs> And it, it just, especially yeah. when you're working with some of the larger plates and you're working with larger parchment and you don't want to sort of be hanging over the edge because as you know if you hang over the edge and you crease it yeah. then yeah. well before mad, you started if you had a piece of a4 parchment you had to go and trim the edges so that you had something to stick it down onto you know so you tr you had to trim your parchment but i i love i love it because uh, you've got it's you've got the diagonal and the straight grid on one plate and you've never had that before it's either been diagonal or a straight so you've got one arm that's got diagonal and one yeah. extender has got diagonal and then you've got another arm of the plate that's got straight and one of the extenders is straight so that's right it's yeah. amazing so many possibilities with it makes you think about it and mix you into a designer i, I think, think because it gives you the the versatility doesn't it and to have that yeah. larger area to work within now for those of, um, people at home that have previously bought the celtic plate mate which is the original um what we call um the broken plate mate because you think oh i've got it and it's broken what we've also done jim has worked his magic and we've got two extender bars as well so if you're thinking, oh, I, I'm not into my grid work, I just, I've got the Celtic plate mate, the extended one, and I just want to be able to, look, this is the original one here. Let me just bring that in. Whee! There we go. So this is the original A4 square plate mate, beautiful alphabet on it. And now you have the two extenders so that you can pop your A4 plates in there as well. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. And the little letter boxes, which are the same as on the starter kit, will house all the letters. So again, if you're working and you want to do a funky, just like we do with the starter kit, then you've got those if you're worried about lining up and positioning. They're always so well sought out, aren't they? Absolutely. It's, brilliant it's, minds it's, coming together. It's a dream team, isn't it? It's sort of yeah. what teamwork makes a dream. And I've got yeah. a couple of samples here from the design team. This is using the, just a new plate, mate. So this one I'm guessing is, this one is from the lovely Frances Knott. Oh, and she's Francis taken your beautiful yeah. wildflower plate. Yeah. And she's just used Josie's new A4 square, A4 she's plate, such mate. an artist. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. And then the next one, I'm going to sneak a look at this one. Then the next one is from the lovely Glynis Whitehead. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Look at those pop it. Glynis does the most beautiful grid work. Yeah. Gorgeous. And then oh, the gorgeous. final one is a lovely one from, from Jane Telfer. See, Ooh, I Jane. love the, the, yeah. the repetitiveness of the, the pattern lovely. and the design. And you know, if you if you don't if you if you if you struggle to form a complete square with something, some people, new people will struggle. You can just cut out a square and just do the corners and, and just put a little line join in them, or you can use a corner from the plate and then use any of the straight pieces. So now you can incorporate straight and diagonal in your in your borders. Whereas before You'd either have a straight border or a diagonal border, but now you can have both. You know, you've it's got wonderful. that flexibility. Yeah, it's clever, isn't it? Very, yeah. very clever. Very clever. Um, so we've got this available now. Um, this is also going to be showcased in the one. I've got the one day special tomorrow night from the lovely oh. JC Davidson. You've seen those plates, haven't you, Linda? Yeah, I have. Yeah, that would be easy. Oh, amazing. These Messed are. Up. I, I, I get a sneak peek so that people can have a quick look. These are launching tomorrow evening on the craft store at six o'clock. I have the, the pleasure and the honor of working with these beautiful designs from Josie Davidson. And um, this is the Prince's collection. Now these are A4 square plates. So um, 
people that have purchased the ribbon lace plates from Josie, they're that same size. And what that means is that the new plate mate, or if you've got the original one, are gonna hold your plates in perfectly. So we've got four different princes. We've got the lovely William, and then again, you've got your guide at the back and instructions from Josie. And here's a sample that Josie's created. I have to say a big thank you to Josie and the whole of the design team. Um, but I mean, look at that. That is so achievable. It really yeah. is. Oh, yeah. And your lovely little poppies from your wildflower. Then we have <laughs> Prince Philip. Again, another beautiful, sort of real sort of nice designs on there. Yeah. And then look at this. This is juicy. Look, design a parchment, one yeah. layer falls. Fantastic. Um, take advantage of that offer of the week. So that's another one there. Then we've got Prince Harry. I love this beadwork. It, that's what it reminds me of, that beautiful beadwork. Yeah, yeah. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Amazing. No, I, it, it, it always amazes me. You think grid work. When we used to do grid work, traditionally you think oh how many more combinations can we make but Josie just manages to make combination and they all look so different they they never they do. The same. that's beautiful look at that absolutely gorgeous and you've got Same, uh, a rectangle there now out of uh, by extending yeah. it yeah absolutely yeah. so uh, I just wanted to, to show everyone at home what was we've got coming up and um, let me just switch you back to double camera linda so uh, i hope it has it i hope you've enjoyed it linda because i know no, I actually, have. yeah i was really nervous and we we had a, a few teething problems with the setup my son said oh, i i showed you this yesterday didn't I? i've got this i've got this list and it's got turn off the printer because it makes a noise turn off the phones turn on the the, tri the tripod the light on the track and then my son sent me a text this morning he said he said, good luck, he said, with your with your uh, Facebook Live. Don't forget to turn on the computer, Mumsy. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet it was, of course not, son. I bet that was your no, reply, wasn't it, Linda? So, well. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to look forward to next week, then? Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit more with the embossing but we're gonna we're gonna venture further afield maybe put in a few few veins or i've got um what have i got here if i show you this one here we are can you see that oh, so wow. you've, got, you've got smooth there and then you've got one that's got more veins on it yes it's the same. yeah i can see that it's the same one but it looks totally different and i got it a few I can show you next week with different embossing going in different ways to make it look so so different you know i i, I don't know shall we work on the same thing the same one or sh shall we yeah I, I think we stick we stick with the paisley because we're, we're working on that, we so that and, we, and then if we do yeah. a couple of different options then people can decide which yeah. one they prefer to infill within their design that they've created. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few ideas of things I can do with with the Paisley to make something different. So, uh, yeah, save people by the Super duper. Anyway, yeah, it? absolutely. Well, Linda, I'm just sort of, I'm so appreciative and so grateful that you was able to join us today and to, to share all your knowledge. I mean, it, it just very, it's been very special today. It really has. And um, thank I can't you. thank you from the bottom of my heart. So it is, it's, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Pleasure Just like to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you. So we will see you again next Tuesday, same time, same place, in okay. another episode of Groovy Tuesday. And um, we'll carry on with that beautiful white work. So thank you to everyone that's joined in today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Oh, I don't know. I don't need to ask that question. Um, and a big virtual clap hands for the lovely Linda Williams. Thank you. So um, I'll put, just hand over to Linda and then. Okay, well, thank you everybody for tuning in. I, I, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Pleasure to have your company, Paul. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be actually. <laughs> no, not with you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Love you too, Linda. <laughs> Hi, See you all next week, everybody. Stay safe. And um, I hope you can tune in tomorrow for the, the one day special launching on the craft store at six o'clock. Until then, take care. I'll be in the Chakra Bath tomorrow at 10. Um, and it's the final day in Camelot. So take care and I'll see you all again soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.